All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Week number 14, we're diving into the Sunday slate in the NFL with the exception of the Sunday night football game, Cowboys-Eagles. That will be its own video on the channel, so make sure to go check that out. But all of the other games taking place on Sunday, we are jumping into in today's video. We're going to go through each and every game. We'll talk about it. I'll give you my lean on the spread. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about the games, like I said. But all my final plays, if you do want to fade my picks, if you want to be a guppy and you want to fade my picks, those plays will be in the pinned comment, guys. And I update that always before game time now I don't love the board this week I'll come right out there and say that so usually we're throwing out you know five six maybe seven final plays I'm not sure if we're going to get to that number this week but we shall see keep an eye on that pinned comment and uh, yeah before we jump in guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that like button as well I believe the last time we talked to you on a football video we had 39,000 subscribers now we're almost at 41,000 subscribers so appreciate the hell out of you guys and doing that in just a week we've now hit 40,000 subscribers so Pumping some crowd noise for yourselves. You guys are truly, truly the best. Really the cog that makes this thing go. I'm just a dummy with a camera and a mic. So appreciate the hell out of you guys. But let's go ahead and jump into game number one here. We got Cleveland taking on Jacksonville. Now, a few things to kind of keep an eye on during this game. Trevor Lawrence was not expected to play. Now he's listed as questionable. He was throwing with a, I believe some sort of a brace or something like that the other day walking around looking okay so he is questionable now as we know um the browns are on to their like a millionth quarterback joe flacco now playing for them which you know i don't necessarily hate all that much but i don't really love so this is going to come down to uh, sort of the injury report before i make this lean right now cleveland two and a half point uh favorites at home if trevor lawrence is a go which i don't know how much you can really expect him to play right um he left the last matchup and then did not come back but all of a sudden now it's like okay well maybe he's okay maybe he's playing if he plays i'll trust the better quarterback here and lean towards jacksonville but we're gonna have to wait out that injury report if he doesn't play i'm gonna look at the browns because they have um now i'm not knocking jacksonville's defense but i think this browns defense is better so i'm gonna lean towards the browns if trevor lawrence is out if he's in i'll take a peek at jacksonville but again guys we're not gonna force anything this week whatsoever so maybe this game doesn't even make it to the final plays Total sitting at 33 right now. I could see this being like a 17 to 14 type of a game. So I'm going to lean towards the under. Again, two good defenses against offenses that, yes, um, you could say that the offenses have looked good at times. Even Jacksonville, like their offense looks like it's put together. But if CJ Beathard's in there, I don't really trust it that much. Um, and Cleveland, like I don't really think that they're going to go out there and put up many points. Um, but their defense needs to click. They've had two bad defensive games in a row here against Denver and the Rams. But if they get back to what they're doing, I do think that this could be a low scoring game. So keep an eye on the pin comp to see if we roll with anything in this game next up we have baltimore taking on the rams here baltimore favored by seven and a half points which i don't all that much love that number obviously i wish it was in a touchdown if we bet this game we might buy a point just to get it to within that you know seven mark maybe a six and a half spread here but i do like baltimore to win this game i think a lot of people um are gonna overthink this game um and, and how it's gonna go down or is people gonna be like okay well everyone thinks baltimore right so we're all gonna look at the rams and it's like are you just overthinking overthinking like at some point can you just say hey the better team is baltimore now i could see plenty of arguments for the rams here because of that number so don't get me wrong like i said if we bet this game i literally want to buy down a point so that we keep it into a touchdown range so already right there i'm showing you and telling you that there is value in that seven half so if you're on the rams i don't hate it i get it i just trust the uh i just trust um baltimore a little bit more that defense is legit and you could say that the rams found their running back and you know they're more of a dynamic offense with a run game and that's true because as we know um, those are types of that's that's the type of team that um, I think that we that they like to, to run out there but I still trust that Baltimore's a little bit better so uh, just note that you know I'm not trying to talk you off the Rams if you like that but I personally do think that Baltimore is the play in this game total sitting at 40 uh, I already gave kind of kudos to Baltimore's defense um, but if the Rams can get to 17 21 points on them I do think that this is a easy over because I like Baltimore to score a couple um, you know I, I don't know 24 plus here now I will say I believe they're expecting some rain so depending on how heavy that is will impact how much we want to look at that total and how much we like the over but as of right now all things considered weather you know kind of up in the air um no pun intended I do think that this is a good spot for an over next up we got Chicago taking on Detroit here now Detroit obviously the better team they've played better right uh going up against the Chicago team that struggled this season they've started to look okay um they did just lose to Detroit uh 31 to 26 last time they played um but what I will say here is 
that spread is a little like I guess a alarming in a sense like it smells like a trap if you're on the Detroit side of things so as weird as it is as and as much as I may not want to do it I think that I lean towards uh Chicago here plus the field goal uh, again like I'm trying to line read here in, in Detroit last time they played seven and a half point favorites they only win by five right Okay, um, was that the week before Thanksgiving or, uh, yeah. So then Chicago comes in here. Now they're at home. I get it. Maybe that's a little bit different, but they're only plus three. So I'm reading this line here. I think Detroit minus three is a trap. I'm avoiding the trap. Going Chicago plus the three points. Total sitting at 43. I think it's a little bit too high. This could easily be, easily be a 21-17 game. Yes, we saw them uh, last time go out there and score. Uh, you know, Chicago um, lost 20 or 31 to 26. I don't think that many points are scored here in this game. I think Detroit has that offense to do it, but their offense has been fairly inconsistent. Like, you know, only 22 against uh, Green Bay. Only, was it, uh, six against Baltimore. Like, they've had a couple times where it's like, oof, you guys haven't scored a lot of points. So might be a little crazy, but I'm reading the lines here. Obviously with Detroit's offense cooking like that, Chicago's defense not being all that great, uh, you know, it's weird that it's only a three-point spread, and it's weird that it's only a 43-point total. So I'm trusting what the Vegas has given us here, um, what the Vegas, the books are giving us here, and I'm leaning towards Chicago and the under, which may not be the most popular plays there. But I'll tell you what is popular. Over on Sleeper right now, guys, you can get a Jalen Hurts line if you're a new user, 0.5 passing yards. Do you think he's going to throw for one yard in a rival game Sunday night football against the Cowboys? Yeah, I think so. If you're not on Sleeper yet, make sure to go check it out. They have a really cool thing going on right now as well. If you use the link in the pinned comment for Sleeper, you'll get this Square's new sign-up, and they'll match your deposit up to 5 hundred bucks yes 500 bucks if you put in 500 dollars, they'll match it you'll have a new count balance of a thousand that is absolutely crazy that they're doing that and they have even and it gets better and they have even more to offer you guys they are doing a one million dollar giveaway right now where all you have to do is get the and accrue these entries um, and tickets by placing entries on the app. Five dollar minimum, you get a ticket. Uh, you can get four tickets per day, and they're doing a doing a drawing at the end of December for a million dollars. I think the drawing is the day after Christmas. So, guys, no better time to sign up for Sleeper. You get that massive deposit boost, right? Uh, up to five hundred bucks match. You get this Jalen Hurts square, and you have a chance at a million bucks. Damn, go ahead and check out Sleeper, guys. That link is in the pinned comment. Let's get to the next game here it's a game i probably wish i didn't have to to look at and have to cover here um saints six point favorites over carolina i'll take that not much more breakdown to do here i trust the saints defense it's within a touchdown uh didn't spend too much time on this because i doubt this becomes a final play the total sitting at 38 and a half i don't really see how carolina moves the ball against the saints here so i'm gonna lean towards the under as well because this is not a high powered saints offense either right like we've seen some um you know offensive struggles with them so under 30 and a half as well as saints minus the six points in this game are gonna be my two leans Another game in which I don't really love, we have Atlanta taking on Tampa Bay. And I told you guys off the start, right? I was like, I don't love all the, the matchups uh, for this week. Some may have implications and playoff implications, and I get sort of why that may be, um, I, I don't know, why that you know may make teams play harder and whatnot. But still, the matchups, just not all of them are all that great. So Tampa Bay is coming off a win to Carolina. Atlanta's coming off of two straight wins to New Orleans and the Jets. So I don't know how much stock I want to put into that. But what I will say is this is an Atlanta team that's 4-2 and two at home this season. Season, and I think that'll go a long way here. So they're comfortable at home. I'm going to lean towards them minus two. The total sitting at 41 right now. Kind of a weird one. I think that this probably finishes right around, you know, 42 or so. So slight lean towards the over. But those offenses, can you really trust them? I'm not sure. I'm more likely to lay the two points as Atlanta as a final play in this game than I am the over. All right, next up, we have Cincinnati taking on Indianapolis. Can Browning do it going up against Gardner Minshew? I think so. I think that the Bengals actually have a cast of company that is is kind of a team that's willing to grind and willing to fight. We saw them pull out that nice win um, against Jacksonville on Monday night. Like, this is a team that has some potential even outside of Joe Burrow and Browning played well right like that's a guy that looked uh you know Joe Burrow wouldn't really have done much better than Browning he was 32 of 37 354 yards for a tutty right and Joe Mixon got it going um at least in the red zone two touchdowns there as well like this is a team that I do think has some oomph even without Joe Burrow they always start the season slow and they finish the season strong now they're gonna do it without Joe Burrow I'll take them minus the two points um, FanDuel has them at minus one and a half right now so we might even just look at them on the money line here 
The total sitting at 44. This total has moved up. It started off at, I want to say started off at 40 um, or 41 or so. Um, and then has just gone up, up, up. And I still like the over. I think that this is a Bengals defense that, yes, they have some good defensive players, maybe the pass rush. But overall, um, I think the Colts should be able to move the ball. So there should be sort of a, a constant flow of points here. I'm just hoping that that Cincinnati offense looked like looks like it did last week. Because if that's the case, I think that we do see, you know, 45 plus in this spot. All right, Jets taking on Houston. Again, this is another one where I'm looking at it and I'm like, is this is this a trap? Like the Jets are only three and a half point dogs. Um, in fact, they're getting that, you know, key number three and a half too. Like is the Jets the, the move here? Like, does that even make sense? It's probably not. I'm not going to fall for that trap because um, the Jets haven't, you know, at least Chicago, when we talked about that trap game, they've looked okay as of late, right? The Jets really haven't. They've lost, uh, was it five straight games? Uh, haven't covered in five straight games. Like, I don't buy into them now. Texans have been a little rickety when they've been favorites here this year, but still playing explosive football, right? So I'm going to lean towards the Texans. But again, I say that with a smile on my face because it's like, is this a trap? Are we missing something here? Now, the total sitting at 33, which really makes me think that this is um, sort of a game in which, you know, it's going to be crappy weather. Uh, we're going to have, which I, I believe it is in the Meadowlands there. We're going to have some turnovers and everything like that, which if that totals 33, kind of makes sense why the Jets are plus three and a half, right? So I got to pick one or the other. I got to pick a lane here. And I think I'm going to lean towards Houston minus the three and a half and almost forget the total because the total and the spread together tell me Jets, Jets, Jets. But I got to trust that the Texans are a better team, even if they're playing in a monsoon, right? Like, though they rely on some of these deep passes, Tank Dell's injured, like, I get it. They're better than the Jets, right? Yeah, man, should this be a spot where I'm fading myself? I don't know, but I'm leaning Texans here, minus three and a half points. Probably should be the Jets. All right, San Fran taking on Seattle. This line has moved all the way up to 13 right now. Um, I think it's actually 13 and a half on most books, which is crazy. Uh, but I think it's, it's you know, they're telling you what they think is going to happen. Like, this has gotten, you know, all the way bought from, you know, what was it, 10 and a half, 11 or something like that, to 13 and a half now. The books are afraid that San Fran's going to blow them out, which obviously they're capable of. They're the best team in the league. Um, last time they played two, what was it, a 31 to 13, uh, 13 excuse me, game. I'm going to lean towards San Francisco. The number's probably way too high for me to make a final play, if I'm being completely honest. Um, but yeah, I don't really know how you can justifiably take Seattle. I think that a lot of people are going to be like, oh, that's way too big of a number uh, for a, a sort of um, divisional rival and blah, blah, blah. It's not too big of a number for San Francisco. I just don't think it is. Um, we've seen them make a mockery of really good teams. Cowboys, Philadelphia, like, and they just did this to Seattle a couple weeks back on Thanksgiving. Like, this San Francisco team is damn legit. Now, can they get caught off guard or win this game by 12, still dominate and not, not cover? Yes, that's probably why we're sticking away from the number, but I don't think it's too many points to give Seattle. I just don't. The San Francisco team is that good. Now, the total is sitting at 46 right now. I almost want to look at a San Francisco over in a in a in um, in terms of their team total. I think it's at 28 and a half right now. That may be the move because I do think that if, you know, Seattle wins this game, it's going to be like 34 to, you know, 31 or something like that. Like, I don't think that they stop San Francisco all that much. So my totaling, I guess, is slightly towards the over um, if Seattle can kind of hold their own here. But I do like San Francisco over 28 and a half. All right, Vegas taking on Minnesota. I have one lean here that um, it's already a final play over on H2H. Uh, so <laughs> I took the over in this game and I took the over in this game because I think everybody thinks that this is an automatic under. So uh, I like this spot for just, you know, neither one of these defenses is playing or firing on all cylinders as of right now. The issue is that the offenses also aren't firing on all cylinders. So Minnesota, you can make an argument that, uh, you know, their defense has looked fairly good. You know, 19, 21, 12 points. No, no, no. Denver's offense, just as they were kind of hitting their stride, Chicago and the New Orleans are the teams that they played. Atlanta played them before that, 28 points. Then Green Bay before they were kicking, 10 points, right? Like, this is a this is a Minnesota defense that is good, not great. And all we need is good in this spot, not great, because we're looking at a total of 40 and a half. So if we take the Vegas Raiders into account, which, again, you can make an argument that, oh, well, they've held opponents low as well. Yeah, the teams that they've held low are New York. New York, so the Jets and the Giants the Patriots, uh, Green Bay before they were playing well. Like, this is a uh, Raiders defense that uh, I don't think is good whatsoever. So I'm hoping this final score can come to, you know, Minnesota putting up 24-ish points. Um, maybe the, the Raiders just sticking around with 17. Like, I do think that this is a slight over here. Um, 
because I can't back the defense to keep it into the 30s. I guess that's where I go. In terms of a spread, uh, I like Minnesota minus the three points. I think they're a better team. They're kind of due now. Um, obviously, you know, they've lost two in a row. They've kind of, the fat of Josh Dobbs is wearing, worn off, but Justin Jefferson being bad, I think that's going to be a good spot for Minnesota to win by a field goal. Um, they're just a better team overall, in my opinion. All right, Chargers taking on the Broncos. I don't know if I can trust the Broncos on the road anymore. They did us dirty last week, so I'm going to lean towards the Chargers here, minus two and a half. It's more of a fade the road Broncos, uh, two and three this year on the road. And in terms of them going on that win streak, that was majority of it at home, right? Uh, one game, I think it was was Buffalo on the on the road, if I'm not mistaken, or is a Kansas City game? One big game they did win on the road. I'll give them credit there. But this is a Chargers team that, uh, you know, I'm not really backing but I'm fading Buffalo, uh, excuse me, I'm fading Denver there. So in terms of uh, total 44 is where we're sitting right now. I think I like that over. Um, both teams, you know, obviously Denver's defense was playing well, but if both teams can get to that 20 point mark, which they should be able to, this Chargers team is absolutely due to kind of kick it into gear. Um, they play Baltimore and New England too. Good. Baltimore definitely. New England may be a fake defense, but uh, played well that day, right? They only scored six points and won that. I think they're due for a bigger day. So I'll take the over here, but it is a slight lean because can we trust either one of these offenses to truly, you know, keep it going and get it going? I'm not necessarily sure. I'd much rather just lean towards the home team minus the two and a half here as my main lean. Kansas City taking on Buffalo. This should be a very good game. Probably the best matchup we have on the slate in today's video. And this rolls right into the Dallas Philly game. Like, I think this is going to be a good one. I'm going to lean towards Kansas City. Um, but if you are on the Buffalo side of things, I don't hate it. I'm not trying to knock anyone for it. Um, but I do think that this is a, a good Kansas City spot now. They haven't played this season, but this has been a battle in terms of what we've seen. So Kansas City has won six of the last 10 that they've played. We're dating back years, so it doesn't really matter. But, you you know, two of the better teams in the AFC, but neither one of them really firing on the cylinders they like to fire on, right? Like this Buffalo team has lost three of their last four. Kansas City has gone win or loss, win, win, loss, excuse me, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. I can't say patterns um, in their last like six games, seven games. So this is a two teams that are fairly unpredictable, but I do think Kansas City has more tools um, in the department. If Rice comes along as well, like they're finally maybe, maybe starting to find a receiver that, um, uh, you know, Mahomes can trust. We'll see. But I do think that this is a, a big home spot here as well for Kansas City as Buffalo is only one in four on the road this year. So give me Kansas City total sitting at 48 and a half on most sports books here. I know that that says 49. I think that it's going to have that like prime time effect, right? Where, you know, it's a close game. They're grinding it out. Two teams that you expect blow, uh, explosive offense. Maybe it doesn't come through. So I'm going to lean towards the under ever so slightly. Like I could see this being like a, like a 44 point finish, right? So it's not like I'm saying it's a, it's going to be a game in the teens, um, but I don't necessarily know if it gets into the fifties. It could, um, but I, I think that this is going to have more of a, like, like a down and dirty type of a football vibe to it. And guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video, week 14 Sunday slate. Keep an eye out for the Sunday night football video. And then we have two Monday night football games as well. Appreciate, pre, I can't talk at the end of this video. Appreciate you guys for tuning in here. If you guys are still watching, go ahead and drop an 18 in the comments. Let me know that you're part of the Fade Squad and not a guppy. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out.